Thanks for joining us. We're here in Mission, Contro Mission Control, and I'm joined by Dr. Vic Cooley, who's the lead increment scientist. Thanks for joining us this morning. So we're right in this great transition phase. We've got a crew that's preparing to depart. They've been wrapping up their long-duration mission, which has been heavily focused on science, and we're readying for a new crew. Um, we know that you, you have a team, you're part of a team, that works on strategically planning all of this science. Can you tell us a little bit about what Expedition 41 has done? What type of highlights there have been from their science? Well, thank you, Nicole. I'd be glad to. Yes, yeah, so over the past uh, eight weeks or so, we've uh, conducted uh, Increment 41. Um, it's been a, uh, an extreme challenge because of two EVAs that were not planned during this time period were, were added late uh, uh, just before the increment began. But despite that, uh, and each EVA brings with it uh, on the order of 100 to 150 hours of additional crew time activity to accommodate and prepare for and then clean up after those EVAs. But despite all that, uh, we were able to get all of the critical science done and perhaps the key uh, key accomplishment in the science activity, uh, certainly a new one uh, for the space station, is the uh, enhanced uh, rodent research facility. Now we've flown rodents on the on the shuttle system uh, over 20 times over a 30-year period of the of the shuttle life, but in this case, this is a, an expanded capability. Uh, you know, we use rodents to as as models for bone and muscle loss primarily, and and again, that's what this uh, effort was about in increment 41. There were two key objectives uh, to uh, prove that the new system, consisting of three pieces of hardware, the the transporter unit, the habitat that the mice live in for the however many days they're in weightlessness, and an access unit, which is used to transfer uh, mice between their habitat and a work volume. So all three of those pieces uh, of hardware worked as expected, and the second objective uh, was to return uh, frozen tissue from the mice after either 20 days for some of the mice and 30 days for additional mice. Uh, that tissue has been returned from the 20-day mice on the SpaceX that landed uh, in late October, so I should say splashed down off the coast of California on the SpaceX 4 mission. So um, uh, the two main objectives uh, for that research uh, were well accomplished, and, and now we're looking forward to more research in, in that area. And is there more, um, I guess you were alluding to, there's more of that experiment uh, and research plan for Expedition 42? Uh, not for Expedition 42, but in Expedition 43 will be um, a SpaceX 6 mission, two SpaceX vehicles from now, and it will extend the, uh, the challenge to the, to the hardware system. We've proven that the hardware system can support mice and, and keep them healthy for 30 days, and now we're going to extend that to 60 days. Of course, it's designed to, to uh, support rodents that long. Um, so it, there's a big future for rodent research. You know, in the, in the 2011 um, um, decadal research by the National Institute of Health, or um, uh, I'm, I'm getting my acronyms confused. It wasn't National Institute of Health, but it was one of the um, recommending agencies that helps NASA do long-term planning. Uh, and it's called a decadal survey. That survey uh, strongly recommended that uh, station develop a rodent research capability. So this is the first response to that. And I expect we'll be doing rodent research probably in, a, in an ongoing basis for, for years to come. OK, can you tell us some of the other uh, research that is planned for Expedition 42? I'd be glad to. Um, the last time uh, I talked, uh, it was with uh, um, uh, Brandy, about two months ago, we talked about the increment 41 science, and and that time I talked about model organisms in all the biological uh, experiments that we had over the past eight weeks. <clears throat> I want to do something similar today on the SpaceX 5 mission in uh, in December. We have uh, I want to talk about seven experiments that are really biological in nature. Um, and I want to do that by going through the three laboratory modules one at a time and talking about two or three investigations in each. So, uh, but first let me point out that, uh, you know, uh, these model organism biological type investigations are in, in no way the only type of science we have on the space station. Uh, we have lots of physical science uh, in materials research and so forth. We have lots of research looking out at the rest of the solar system and the universe, and we have lots of human adaptation uh, research uh, going on to uh, allow us to explore the solar system. Uh, but today, and because of the SpaceX 5 mission, which is particularly um, 
well suited for biological type experiments which characteristically have to go up for uh, the, the nominal mission is 30 days and then come home after that period of time. That, that profile is, is well suited to these biological missions so that's why I talked about them for SpaceX 4 and, and that's why I'm talking about them again for SpaceX 5. So starting in the Columbus module we have um, uh, two cellular level experiments and one plant experiment. Yes, uh, so the um, Columbus module um, uh, shown on the left there is uh, the, known as the, uh, well, it's the ESA, European Space Agency uh, Laboratory, known as Columbus. Um, the first experiment I want to talk about is called Triple Lux. Uh, this uses blue muscle um, hemocytes. Now, hemocytes are... are uh, uh, phagocytes in this case. They actually detect and ingest foreign bodies. So this would be a, a uh, immune response in the plasma of the blood, so to speak. It's not a cell-mediated immune response. It's outside the, the other cells. And, and these hemocytes are uh, dedicated. Their sole purpose in life is to uh, detect and ingest and eliminate uh, invading threats to the to the organism. So in this case, the the hemocytes will be uh, incubated, some at zero g and some at one g, and we use the one g as a control to uh, make sure that we're not misinterpreting misinterpreting the effects of weightlessness with the effects of radiation, because that's the other strong difference between. Uh, on Earth and in space as the radiation environment is quite a bit different. So many uh, life science samples are affected by radiation. So several of our experiments have a 0G and a 1G uh, version of them. It, this experiment has that. We will look with a, through a microscope with video at these hemocytes as they ingest foreign material, both in 1G and 0G. So that's the uh, triple lux experiment. The second experiment in the uh, Columbus module is uh, T-cell activation in aging. Um, this one uses um, uh, human uh, blood cells, human white blood cells known as T-cells, T for the thymus. The human thymus is below the sternum, and this is where those cells are produced. These cells have special receptors on their surface that respond to uh, threats, and they trigger immune reactions in, in other cells. So it's, uh, these, these um, T-cells will be incubated uh, in the cubic incubator in the um, in the ESA module, and after 75 hours, uh, they will be fixed and returned to Earth. Um, and we will do some genetic analysis on them there. there. Um, so that's a little bit different from the first experiment, the uh, triple lux, where we were talking about dedicated cells, like antibodies and antigens that, that go after and eliminate uh, threats. In this case, it's a cell that it merely detects and then triggers other cellular responses to respond to the immune system. So there's a fundamental difference there. Um, in the first case, it was it was invertebrate cells of the blue muscle, the aquatic blue muscle, not muscle cells, but M U S S E L in this case. And then in the second case, it's it's actually human white blood cells. So the third experiment I want to talk about is a plant experiment, and you did speak about the seedling growth experiment that's going on this week. Another plant experiment um, in the ESA module is uh, APEX-3. This is Advanced Plant Experiment, and um, this experiment looks at plant cells. In particular, we're growing Arabidopsis seeds, which happen to be the same seeds in the current experiment, but this approach is, is fundamentally different in that the uh, plant cell walls um, have structural elements known as uh, uh, microfilaments uh, and uh, tubin or uh, actin, which are uh, plant cell walls. Basically, all plant cells aid in the structure of holding the plant up against gravity, uh, unlike human cells, or excuse me, unlike animal cells. So in plant cells, we're, we are, again, using molecular uh, biomolecular um, genetics at, at the very smallest level that we're at today in our forefront of science and studying how 
uh, mechanisms signal each other throughout the organism. So we're looking at signaling pathways for how the plants change and respond differently in 0G versus 1G because now they don't have to hold up their structure. They don't need as much of these actin filaments in the cell walls and they grow differently. So uh, we're, we're looking at that. That experiment actually returns uh, plant tissue fixed with paraformaldehyde, which allows the cell structure to remain intact. But we also fix other samples with um, a, a fixative called RNA later. And those are frozen, uh, unlike the paraformaldehyde samples, which can only be refrigerated so the, the freezing won't burst the cell walls if for the genetic RNA later fixative, those cells are frozen, and then we can do molecular analysis on the frozen samples. But a third um, uh, result from this plant experiment is that towards the end of the experiment, after several days of growth, the plant tissue will be taken into the U.S. lab where we have a fluorescent microscope, and many of the proteins, some of the proteins that are key in signaling the actin how strong to grow, uh, have been tagged with a green fluorescent protein, a so-called reporter gene, that allows an observer through uh, on the space station through this fluorescent microscope, and it's, it's actually a camera that's looking through the microscope, so the scientists on the ground can see the camera and record the video. Um, and this, the green fluorescent protein is a technique developed in the 90s and, and well matured today, and it's widely used, so much so that we actually have three fluorescent uh, microscopes on the space station. This one happens to be in the fluids rack in the U.S. lab. So we have three ways of looking at the results, the uh, refrigerated return, the frozen return, and the video return of the green fluorescent protein, uh, which tags the, uh, the structural elements. Yeah, you can see the uh, U.S. lab is shown uh, circled there in the center. Um, so two other experiments we have in the U.S. lab as we're proceeding through the three labs now. Uh, the other, uh, the second experiment in the U.S. lab is known as Micro 5. This uses the model organism uh, C. elegans, which is a roundworm. It's also known as the nematode. And this experiment looks at the combined effect of reduced immunity. We, we know that in humans and in, in all organisms, there is actually reduced immune response in microgravity. Uh, and we also know that for some uh, pathogens and bacteria like salmonella, there's increased virulence. So the combination of these two effects is um, uh, both detrimental to the host, and we're looking at the interactions of increased virulence and decreased immunity in the case of these nematode uh, 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 cells. And I'm trying to remember, these are actual full organisms of the nematode, I'm pretty sure, uh, in response to the salmonella. So in this experiment, we'll again return both refrigerated and frozen samples and do uh, cellular and molecular analysis on those. Well, this sounds like a lot of fascinating science to come. I'm sorry, we're going to have to wrap it here. but. Okay. Um, it just sounds like there's so much going on, lots of exciting research, and the best place for folks to uh, learn more about these experiments is on our website at uh, www.nasa.gov station. So thank you so much, Dr. Cooley, for joining us, and we look forward to following along with this. I'd love to come back. Thank you.